Hello. I'm going to be the nurse who is going to record some of your vital signs before your pulmonary examination. Is that okay with you? Wonderful. So I'd like to start by just grabbing your temperature. And I'm just going to be using a simple probe thermometer under the tongue. And if I could just have you open your mouth and lift your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Wonderful, thank you. And if you could just lay your tongue on top of the thermometer. Good, we'll just wait here for a few more seconds. Wonderful. And I'm going to record your temperature down. Right. Which is well within normal limits. And then I am going to be taking your pulse rate and your respiration rate. Do you have any preference as to which wrist I use to measure your pulse. Okay, let's do it on this side then. So I am just going to put my two fingers here, right at the radial artery underneath the thumb. If we were having a little fun with it, we could also do the ulnar here. But we're going to take it right here. And I'm just going to measure some characteristics like the rate of growth, also the strength, just a little bit about the quality of the pulse. Good. We sit here for just a bit, and then I can take that value, multiply it to get our beats per minute. So, it was a little high, but the pulse itself is quite strong, but not overly so. And Respirations are definitely within normal limits. Good. There we go. And I am going to be measuring your blood pressure now. So this is with the sphygmomanometer and the cuff that goes over the arm. So I'm going to use this as well as my stethoscope. Takes a little bit of maneuvering. But I'm just going to put the cuff on the arm. It will be quite firm. And the two tubes that we have here, they go down along the radial artery. I have a dial here with a clip so I can put this on the cuff. And then I have our our bulb that actually inflates the cuff. So let me just make sure this is closed all the way. Okay, 
and it is. So I'll let that bit of air out. And we'll close the valve. I'm going to put the diaphragm of my stethoscope right in the crook of the elbow here. And then we'll just inflate the cuff. This is going to get quite tight. It does not last very long, okay? Very good. So, that was 126 over 82. I think that is just fine. And lastly, while I'm recording this data, I'm just going to put a little clip on your finger. We're going to test your oxygen saturation. All you have to do is just hold your finger still. Okay, so if I could see one of your fingers, good, okay, just hold that, millimeters of mercury, and then we'll take a peek at this, okay. heart rate did come down a little from what I saw on our oxygen saturation meter. So I'm just going to take that off. Okay, and that is all of the data that I need. Thank you so much for being patient, and I hope that your pulmonary exam goes well for you. Hello there, and welcome to your pulmonary examination. How are you doing today? I see. Well, I hope by the time you leave this exam, you feel even just the littlest bit better. So I'd like to grab just a couple of things from you. If I could just have you confirm your name and date of birth for me. Very good, and is that your preferred name, and how do you like to be addressed? The pulmonary examination. This is a relatively simple exam in that it only involves two tools. We have the hands and we have a stethoscope. So with the pulmonary exam, I'm going to be looking for certain diseases like 
COPD, emphysema, we look at signs of asthma, pneumothorax, pneumonia, things of that nature. So I am going to be using our four types of manual diagnostic techniques. We have inspection, we have palpation, percussion, and auscultation. This is primarily going to be conducted on the posterior chest wall. So that's going to be your back, okay? But the whole time that I'm doing this, I'll be telling you what I'm going to be doing, what's going on, so that you're not lost even though you might not be able to see me, okay? Wonderful. So for this examination, I am going to need to be touching you. Is that okay with you? Do I have your consent to do that? Wonderful. So let's start with our inspection. So first off, I have been watching you breathe. You've been able to speak normally with me. You've had a pretty, pretty even rhythm of breathing. You don't seem to have any signs of cyanosis. The lips are not a blue or dusky color. Would you mind if I see your hands for a moment? Good. Okay. Let's look at the hand. So what I'm looking for is the pallor. If there is a blue color to the nails, for example. Good. And the other hand. Okay. And I am going to have you do something for me. If you could put the backs of your first finger, first segment of the finger together, nails touching, we're going to look for something called clubbing, finger clubbing. Sometimes in certain diseases, the end of the finger becomes quite swollen. And there's this little window between the two nails. And if that window isn't present, then we might be having an issue with one of those diseases. So if you could just press the fingers together. Good. And so that little window between the nails is indeed present. Good. So I'm going to make a few notes just to try. Very good. So, you haven't been positioned in what's called a tripod position. You haven't been leaning forward to breathe either, so that's good. The trachea looks to be midline. Do you mind if I just feel that a little bit? Okay, I just want to make sure that that is indeed. Good. So that looks nice and straight down, right in the middle. Very good. And as you've been breathing, I haven't been seeing you compensate with the accessory muscles. So we're not using the sternocleidomastoid. We're not using the scalenes or pectoralis major, which is good. And now let's take a look at the shape of the chest itself. So depending on either a disease related to the lungs or just a deformity, sometimes we can see a difference, an abnormality in the chest wall. So we can get what's known as a barrel chest, we can have problems with scoliosis, or if you have a very extreme curve forward, for example. Some people can get a sunken chest. Some people can get a peaked chest right in the middle. But looking at you from the side, 
as well as from the front. That all looks just fine. Now this is where I'm going to have you turn around for me so that I can look at the posterior chest wall. And we're going to be doing some palpation, okay? I'll give you a moment to just flip around. Good, and then I am going to be feeling around. And let me know if there's any pain or tenderness. Looking for soreness or signs of bruising. And that was all of this. Good. Okay, it's quite a bit of real estate we're working with. Just want to make sure I've got everything here. Good. Now I'd like to test your chest expansion. I'm going to be putting my hands on your back and I'm going to have you take some breaths for me. And I'm going to be looking for the expansion and retraction of the chest wall and if for example only one side expands or if there's an asymmetric movement then we could have a few different issues there so that's mostly what i'm looking for so i'm going to wrap my hands tightly around the back here and if I could have you take a deep breath in and out deep breath in and out deep breath in and out excellent so we have a symmetrical pattern there now i am going to be testing something that's known as tactile fremitus so i'm going to have you say a couple of words and i'm going to be feeling the back and I should be able to feel the vibrations of those words in my hands. And I'm looking for how strong or how weak those vibrations might be. So if I could have you say the words, toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. Good. And now I'll have you say the words ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety-nine. 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 Wonderful. You'll give me just a moment. Now 
Now we are going to be moving on to percussion. With percussion, I am going to be using one hand and putting that on the chest wall. And then I'm going to be using my other hand to strike the joint here of my middle finger. And depending on what that sound is that comes back, tells us a little bit about what's going on in the lungs. Is it a rather dull sound? Is it hyper-resonant? Or is it resonant? And depending on where we are on the chest wall as well, will determine the sound a little bit as well. As we go lower on the thorax, we will get more of a dullness to the percussive sound. So I'm going to start by going down one side and then we'll do the other to start with. So I'm going to start here on the left side. Just coming to the side here. Good. Okay, so we have the one side. The left side is going to be just two lobes. There's five lobes in the lungs. So the left side is going to be our upper or superior and our lower or inferior lobe. And on the right side, from the back, I'm only going to be able to touch the upper and lower lobes. Your middle lobe is actually just at the front and side. And the reason there are three lobes on the right side is because your heart is on the left side. So the lung has to make a little bit of room for your heart to be there. So now I'm going to do one side, the other, down, the other. What I'm doing is comparing one side to the other and making sure they're about the same. So that all sounded normal as well. Now I'm going to do a technique that's called speed percussing. So this means that I am going to be very quickly going down each side of the chest and that's going to accentuate if part of the lung sounds more hyper-resonant or more dull than the rest of the lung. I'm just going to very quickly go down one side. And the other. Okay. So percussion sounds all good. Now I'd like to move to auscultation, which is going to involve our stethoscope. I'm just going to put in the stethoscope, and this is where I tell you to take some deep breaths. I'm going to have you try to breathe, if possible, out of your mouth. 
so in and out of the mouth that will give me a little bit more breath to work with so if I could have you just take a deep breath in here and out Good. That's a good lungful. Deep breath in. And out. Deep breath in. And out. breath in and out doing really well deep breath in and out deep breath in breath in and out okay. breathing sounds normal I wouldn't expect it but there definitely weren't any crackles and no wheezing everything sounded just normal so now I am going to have you say a few different things and this can exaggerate or accentuate certain types of issues so firstly if I could have you say the word 99 we'll go through our different spots here 99 And now if I could have you say E, like a long E sound, E, okay? E, E, E.
you whisper the word 99 should be almost inaudible for me so every time I place the stethoscope here whisper the word again so that we can take a listen to the anterior chest and do our little vocal tests as well. I'll give you a second there. Good, and then we're going to do our percussion here. side than the other. Good. I'm going to do our speed percussion, one side, then the other. Good. Okay, so percussion sounds good. Now we're going to do some auscultation. It's important to get the auscultation on the anterior side as well because the middle part, as we said, the middle lobe of the right lung, so that's going to be about the fourth rib here and then it makes this kind of irregular four-sided shape so it comes back to the lateral side of the rib cage, and the lower lobe of the lung sits under it so they kind of form this little intersection where one's on top of the other and then it comes down to the bottom part here of the lower lung so we have this irregular shape here that we aren't able to really examine from the back. Let's go ahead and take a listen. I could have you take a deep breath in and out. Breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. 
deep breath in and out deep breath in and out and on the side deep breath in deep breath in so for our vocal test this was much more important to do on the posterior chest wall, but I find it to be a fun little test that really doesn't have any harm to do on the anterior as well. So if I could have you say 99, 99, 99, 99, 99 99 99 99 Good, and now if you could say that long E sound E E And then our whisper test. So if I could have you whisper 99. Okay, if you'll give me just a moment, and then we'll pop this back on. Just want to make sure we have all of our notes. Lastly, we want to auscultate for any tracheal stenosis here. So I can do this both at the back and at the front. So I am just going to And could you hold your breath for a moment? So take a deep breath in and hold and exhale. And then right above the sternum here. And if you could take a breath in, hold, and breathe out. Okay. 
Okay. I am quite pleased with all of that. So, your lungs sounded beautiful. You've got great lung capacity there, and I haven't noticed any sounds out of the ordinary. Percussion tests were great. The structure of the chest wall is looking good. So, I don't have any concerns at all that we're looking at any signs of pulmonary disease. Okay? You have any questions for me at all? All right. So, I'm just going to sign off on your chart. And that will conclude our examination. I'd like to thank you so much for coming in today. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, it would greatly help me out if you clicked the like button and left a comment so YouTube's algorithm registers that it was a good if you want to see more of my work, consider subscribing to the channel. I create primarily medical, pseudoscience, slash alternative medicine, and personal attention ASMR role plays. But I've done a little bit of everything from historical to sci-fi to fantasy. If you'd like to support the channel, I offer ad-free videos, early access on videos, and exclusive content on Patreon.